Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Thank you so much for watching. I want to talk about this. So, and the, the larger issue that I want to talk about is economic growth and the impact that Tesla bot, FSD, and other forms of artificial intelligence. Have. Oh, Mark Plot's here already. Awesome. Mark Plot is in the chat. Uh, I'm going to be, and by the way, I'm wearing the Tesla Man t shirt, elonbits.com, Tesla. Stainless steel water bottle, elonbits.com. I want to talk about impact of Tesla, Tesla FSD, Tesla bot, AI, not just Tesla's AI, but Tesla's real world AI, chat GPT, mid journey. There's all this AI technology that's coming. So my friends Bradford and Matt made a video, which I think it's on Bradford's channel. So rebel, he calls himself Rebellionaire. I'm a supporter of Rebellionaire. I think I'm, a, I'm an affiliate of Rebellionaire. And they come up with a valuation for Rebellionaire, making Tesla bot alone make Tesla worth trillions. Um, and I think, if I understand their base case, they get to a market cap of around $30 trillion. Please stop talking about the effing bot. It's decades away. Can we get FSD done first? It is not decades away. It is not decades away, but that doesn't really matter. That's not the point. Let's get to the point of this video. The point of this video is the impact of artificial intelligence on economic growth, on productivity of labor, on productivity of capital. So I responded to their thing saying, I haven't seen your model yet, but mine is simple. So here's my model for bot. I know that Dan doesn't like this, but here's my model for bot. This is like, again, I like napkin math models. 100 million bots a year selling for $100,000 each average. That's 50, that's $10 trillion a year in revenue. Okay, that's crazy. And, and the gross margin is like 95%. It costs like $5,000 to make a bot. The bot sells for $100,000. The bot is a massive disc, a massive bargain at $95,000. Dan says that it most absolutely is decades away. FSD has been just around the corner for almost a decade. Dan, I'm sorry you're so pessimistic. Um, I think bot might actually be easier than FSD. I, I, I can get into that, but I don't think I want to get that here. I don't want to go there. But, you know, I think bot is, is really, you know, there, bot, there's like the early stage of bot and there's the later stage of bot. We have zero data for bot training. Well, you make a lot of bots, then you get training. Dan O'Dowd. Yeah, Dan, you're becoming Dan O'Dowd. So I post this, this evaluation saying it's $10 trillion a year in revenue, and Gary says, Where's your TAM total addressable market analysis that shows 100 million bots of demand? Who can afford to spend $100,000 per bot? And I think this is, I, I, I'm not trying to crack on Gary. I think this is a very normal response. And there's a lot of other responses like, well, wait a minute, $100 trillion, $10 trillion a year in revenue. That's, you know, bigger than GDP or something like that. So uh, I want to address what, um, they all, what, what I think everyone's missing, okay? And I'm just going to read this to you. This is my, my post on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. I love saying that. Yes, everyone will own a bot. Maybe people will own more than one. I don't think you grok. Grok is, I think, a Heinlein term. Robert Heinlein is the author. I don't think you grok the impact of bot or AI. Talking about chat, GPT, mid-journey, all this AI stuff that's happening on the productivity of labor, productivity of capital and economic growth. I think this is something a lot of people are not getting. I think even my own models that I've done with bot before, I think I'm not really capturing where this is going and I have to really think how I model this. But I, I have another, I tell stories, right? The story I've told in the past is, imagine you have a fast food restaurant, a Burger King. I used to work at Burger King when I was a kid. And in this fantasy Burger King, you have 10 people working and you bring in a bot and the bot doesn't do all the work that any one person does. Sorry. The, bot, the bot doesn't do all the work of any one person, but the bot does enough grunt work that the restaurant owner is able to say, I can get by with only nine workers. And the bot does enough work that the nine workers can still do all the work they need to do. This is a massively simplifying this, right? And the bot works two shifts. So it's replacing a worker who costs the restaurant about $20 an hour. Like their wage might be $15 an hour, but with all the expenses that go along with it, it costs the, the employer about $20 an hour. 2,000 hours a year, that's $40,000. Two shifts, it's $80,000. The bot is doing $80,000 a year worth of work. 
Maybe it does it for 10 years. It generates $800,000 in value for the boss. Boss is perfectly happy to pay $100,000 for that. That's a simple model. That model, what I don't like about that model is it's replacing workers. And that scares people. And Elon talks about how we're going to need universal basic income because there's no work left for humans. And I think Elon's wrong. I don't often say that Elon's wrong, but I think Elon's wrong there. And I, so I have a different story, a different story from the restaurant. And I think you could apply to what I'm about to say to the restaurant. Think about roofing. I think bots are much better suited to that work than humans because the bots don't mind that it's hot on the roof. If a bot falls off the roof, you know, the damage is a lot less than if a human falls off the roof. Um, it's, on, it's repetitive, dangerous, and boring, right? That's, that's what Elon said the bot's for. I'm not saying that the bot is ideal for roofing. Maybe you come up with a specific roofing bot, but I think you get the idea. So in the past, you might have had 10, peop 10 men, it would almost exclusively be men, let's be honest, 10 men working on the roof. Okay, so your roofing crew of 10 men becomes 10 roofing crews with two humans and 10 bots each. You have a company that does roofing, and now instead of having 10 guys going on one roof, you decide, you know what, I'm going to hire a bunch of bots. I'm going to buy a bunch of bots. I'm going to deploy two humans with 10 bots and they're going to do and and now I, I can hire 20 guys i could do 10 times as many roofs right i do 10 roofs instead of one roof at a time i hire twice as many people because i've lowered the cost of, of the pro of the service the the doing the roof to the customer i've reduced my cost for doing it because now i'm only paying two people instead of 10 and now you've got to pay for the cost of the bots but the bots are cheaper than humans the bots don't call in sick, the bots don't, you know, they don't get accused of sexual harassment, you know, whatever. So I've reduced the cost and increased the volume of new roofs. Because now as a customer, I can afford a new roof because it's become less expensive, right? It doubles the human jobs. Instead of taking away human jobs, think, like, if you've ever been in a situation where you needed work done, it was hard to get the work done. Like, it's hard to get a roof done in South Florida, at least. Now, all of a sudden, it becomes easier to get the roof done and it costs less money. It doubles the human jobs and it increases the human's pay because the humans are now much more productive. This is a much nicer story than we're taking human than the bots are taking human jobs. What if the bots make the humans more productive? What if the bot makes capital more productive and you end up doing twice as much work for, work for less money? So that's why and, and now Gary asked about the total addressable market. If the world needs an average of one bot per person. I'm not saying that's correct, but I don't think it's crazy to say that the world is the, the world market for bots is gonna be one bot per it might be 10 bots per person, right? If the market, the global market for bots ends up being eight billion needed, and if you produce a hundred million a year, it would take 80 years to supply eight billion bots, and that's if they don't wear out, and they're gonna wear out in about 10 years. So the volume of bots you need to satisfy the total market is insane. And by the way, if you think that's crazy, imagine Neuralink. Everyone has a Neuralink, 8 billion people, and they upgrade every three years. Okay. So I want to explain this from a different context. This was glo is global GDP per person for most of human history. From the year 1000 BC to the year 1750, it barely budged. And then the Industrial Revolution hit, and what happened? growth accelerated. So there's been multiple revolutions. There's the Industrial Revolution, the Internet Revolution, maybe there's one more revolution that radically changed economic growth. I've got three different graphs of this. World GDP, total GDP over the last two millennia. So this is from, you know, the year zero to the year 2015 or so. And you just see total GDP just goes crazy. Here's another one. This is a much shorter time span. This is from 1870. It's still relatively flat to around 1950. It's growing. And then in 1950, computers start to hit around 1969. And you just see like a really big jump in world GDP. Now that's world GDP. Some countries didn't have accelerating growth. America had massive growth. Uh, the UK, you know, a lot of European countries had massive growth. So if you see, oh, let's see, next big futures here. That's uh, Brian. Brian says, unofficial work market. Get your 15-year-old nephew or kid to help out for allowance money. Church is getting a bunch of scouts to do some tasks, $1 to $4 an hour. Bots don't self-medicate at work. Yeah. So I just wanted to hit on this point that 
when a lot of times I'll come up with a model and I'll say, oh, Tesla's going to have a market cap of $50 trillion or $100 trillion. And somebody will say, well, world G America's GDP is this or whatever. So that's not really possible, which is not first principles thinking. If you are a Tesla investor, ElonBits.com for the Tesla man, uh, for all the Tesla merch. If you are a Tesla investor, you understand, if you really deep dive into Tesla, you understand Tesla runs on first principles thinking. Elon, Elon's businesses run on first principles principles thinking. We don't go with, uh, well, that's not possible because it hasn't been done that way before. That doesn't fit. We look at the roots and we say, what's possible? And this is possible. And we saw that the Industrial Revolution radically accelerated economic growth. I mean, this graph, you know, if you were in 1750, and somebody said, well, you know, global GDP is going to 50, going to 500 X, right. Or 50 X in the next, you know, 250 years, they would have said, no, that's ridiculous. The economy doesn't grow that fast. Right. Well, what happened? The industrial revolution happened and things grew really fast. And then the internet revolution hit and it's, it got even steeper. This curve has been going up and up and up and the AI is going to take it. It's, I use the term step change that the Industrial Revolution was a step change in the productivity of labor. Just all of a sudden, you combine a worker with capital that enables the worker to do more work. And now the worker becomes much more, more productive. The worker becomes so much more productive that he can supply whatever work he's doing. The, the customer gets a lower price. The worker produces so much that the worker generates like tremendous value. The worker gets paid more, and the boss gets paid. The boss makes more money. And that is is the game changer for society and AI is the next step change. So the industrial revolution was a step change. The internet revolution was a step change. Now AI is the next step change. And you see hints of it. Like if you've used chat GPT, you're like, oh, that's pretty good. The FSD, the moment that FSD crosses the threshold and the cars start driving five times as much as a regular car, you're able to deliver rides at one fifth the cost of Uber or less. That's a step change in the productivity of the car. It's not just productivity of labor, it's productivity of capital as well. It's a step change in the productivity of capital. And that's why that's the reason why I think that the AI revolution is going to be like a double step change because it both increases the productivity of labor and it increases the productivity of capital. So Steve Miller says there will absolutely be competition in this market. It's more of an iPhone versus Android market than a monopoly model. Um, Steve, I'm not so sure you're right. I'm not so sure you're wrong. I think I would suggest thinking about this. Is there a first mover advantage? I think Starlink is an example of a first mover advantage that once Starlink is up and running, if you decided you want to launch a competing satellite network, and there are efforts to launch a competing satellite network, but if you're second to that market, your launch costs are higher than SpaceX's launch costs because SpaceX is launching on its own rockets. So how are you launching your satellites into orbit? Are you, if your launch costs are higher, are you producing satellites in the same volume and getting the same economies of scale and producing the satellite? Probably not. So the, the second player to the market in providing services competing with Starlink is going to have a higher cost structure and they're going to be later and Starlink's improving faster. So Starlink has a customer base why are they switching to you? You would have to undercut them on price, but they can undercut you on price because their cost structure is lower. If you do come in lower price, how much lower of a price are you going to get? Are you providing as good a quality service? If Starlink has 50,000 satellites in the sky and you have 500, your quality of service isn't going to be as high. So it's a real challenge to say that you're going to be a second mover. So I think with FSD and RoboTaxi and the RoboTaxi network, if Tesla gets there first, and somebody else figures out self-driving, but they're five years behind, well, Tesla's not going to stop improving. So if Tesla has a fleet of robo-taxis out there, and they have the safest, most efficient robo-taxis out there, and you come along later, and your cost structure isn't as good as Tesla's, and your software, you're now capable of self-driving safer than human, but the Tesla's robo-taxis are 10 times safer than you, and they're more convenient, and they ride smoother, and so on and so forth. Why are people riding in your robo-taxi over Tesla's robo-taxi? If you try to undercut them on price, they undercut you on price because their cost structure is lower. So with Bot, because Tesla is the leader in real world AI and because Tesla is not going to slow down, they're going to continue accelerating that. Tesla comes up with a bot that works. 
Now you've decided you're going to make a bot that's going to compete with Tesla. Well, what's your manufacturing advantage? Do you, you know, Tesla has a manufacturing advantage and an AI advantage. How are you catching up to that? How much do you have to invest? So you have to invest this huge amount of money to try to catch up. You're probably never going to catch up. Your cost structure is going to be higher. It doesn't necessarily make sense to invest in that. It might make more sense to invest in a business that rides on what Tesla's building. So, hi, Johnny. I'm not sure why, Dan, you're saying, what's the point of investing to never reap rewards? Why wouldn't you reap rewards? I'm, I'm a little puzzled about Dan here. I, I don't understand who Dan is. I don't know why Dan is so negative. That's kind of interesting. Johnny Football says, will a two-seat Tesla robo-taxi cut into your pod car revenue? I don't think so, Johnny. First of all, I don't think Tesla's doing a two-seat robo-taxi. I could be wrong. Um, I think at best, the Tesla robo-taxi will deliver rides at, say, 25 to 40 cents a mile in, in American numbers, right? And in dollar numbers in miles. I'm, home, I'm aiming for five cents a mile on the pod car. So I think I would still undercut and I would work partner with Tesla. I'm not really going to compete with Tesla. I'm going to revenue share with Tesla in my fan. And the fantasy that this actually works. Um, were you able to bring your handgun to Japan? I did not try to bring any guns to Japan. I have a friend who's watching my guns. Um, will they pay dividends? Does Amazon pay dividends? I mean, I 13 x my my investment in Amazon. And I don't think they paid dividends in that time. I, Dan, Dan, look at the history of Amazon. I, I, I think Dan is a troll. I'm not sure whether Dan is serious or not. Dan, go back to 2013 when I bought Amazon stock. I bought Amazon stock at like 13x before I sold it to buy Tesla. I don't think they paid a dividend in the time frame that I owned, owned Amazon stock. Somehow I 13x my stock. My stock price 13x without paying dividends. So figure that one out, Dan. <laughs> I think Dan's in the wrong live stream. That's funny. Um, Someone said they would never sell their shares. What's the point in investing? No, I don't know. I think never is probably extreme. Have I been called gaijin yet? No, I have not been called gaijin yet. So, so I just wanted to hit this point. I want people to understand this concept, right? And, and we, we've seen moments of this. The, the, the automated teller machine or ATM or cash machine came along. When the ATM first appeared on the scene, people were worried that it was going to destroy bank teller jobs. And what ended up happening was the ATM made banking so much more efficient that the, the banks were able to have the tellers do higher value work. The ATM did the boring, repetitive, not dangerous, but boring and repetitive work, you know, just dispensing cash out of the account. And it made the banking so much more efficient. The banks were able to open more branches and teller jobs actually doubled. Right. So they, we were told bank jobs, teller jobs are going to get destroyed by the ATMs. And in the end, bank teller jobs doubled. So instead of, this is the, the key point that I want to make, is instead of thinking, I, I, it is an easy way to model Tesla bot and RoboTaxi really, is to say, these are the jobs it replaces, this is what those jobs paid, and this is the valuation. But another way of looking at it is, like the context I'm describing, what if you had a particular business that was doing this amount of work, and because the bot makes the business so much more efficient, what they used to do with five workers, they now do with two. So you've gone from five workers to two, but you do five times as many jobs. So you've really gone from five workers to 10. Because you've gotten so much more productive, your productivity of labor and your productivity of capital has gone up so much that you're able to do five times as much work providing this service or, or product to customers at a lower price and your cost structure is so low, you're making more money and you're able to pay your workers more. That is the future that's really going to happen with bot. It's not that it destroys human jobs. It's that it enables humans to be more productive. So the humans end up doing more work. There's abundance. So consumers get more for less. The employers make more money and the workers make more money. That is a much brighter future than we're destroying all the jobs. So, and, and I think this is where, like, you know, the way Elon talks about it, Elon is sort of like, well, the humans aren't going to need to work anymore. And I think that misunderstands the flexibility and adaptability of humans that rather than saying humans aren't going to be able to work. Now, there may be some point down the road where the AI is so smart. We've got artificial superintelligence and the bots are so smart that 
the computers, the, the, the AI is better at everything and the bots are better at everything. But even in that world, there's this concept called uh, compare, the concept of comparative advantage. That humans will still produce something and we will trade with the bots, we will trade with the AI, and there's still a valuable trade up there. So, you know, Google, Wikipedia, comparative advantage, the law of comparative advantage. If you have a, the, the context of the law of comparative advantage is you have a country that is more productive in every way than some other country. But as long as there's a relative advantage for the, the lesser country, they produce what they're good at and they trade that with the rich country and both are better off. Have I listened to Kara Swisher podcast called Pivot? She did a book review on Elon's biography. Um, I find Kara Swisher to be completely unreliable. Um, she went woke and uh, I don't really care what she thinks about anything anymore. She's lost it. She lost the script. I mean, I don't know what she said, but I, I think also that's not, I don't think that's free. I don't think her podcast is free. I think her podcast is you have to subscribe or something. What's the time in Japan at the moment? It says 11.30 p.m. in Japan. Um, yeah, I think on the point about selling stock, like, so I own a lot of Tesla stock. And I anticipate that I will have, let's say, $50 million in Tesla stock within like seven, I'm making up a number, let's say within 10 years. And like right now I live cheap. I live, I'm even living even cheaper here in Japan because my rent is half what it was in America. And I, I eat out, when I eat out, it's cheaper. It's crazy how cheap life is here. Um, if I um, all of a sudden had $50 million, right? I'd probably sell a million dollars a stock a year, right? And live like a king, maybe. Um, what are the women like in Japan? So one, I think one of the biggest differences in Japan from America is 4% of Japanese people are obese and 40% of Americans are obese. So the most notable thing is that everyone is thin, that it's really striking. Um, and people are generally nice. But I, I, don't, I don't have any Japanese girlfriends or anything, so I can't comment on that. Bot probably won't replace plumbers. I think bot will eventually replace plumbers, but it'll take time. Like, I think bot won't replace stage actors for a long time. I think AI is going to replace film actors. By and large, AI will replace film actors because the photorealistic uh, AI-generated movies will actually be better than and much lower cost to produce than human-generated movies. But stage acting and stage performance... Bots won't be able to re, uh, compete with that. How much is Tesla multiplying in value in seven to 10 years in your calculation? Uh, well, it depends on what happens. In the base cases, FSD doesn't work and bot doesn't work. And Tesla goes from 2 million vehicles a year to 20 million vehicles a year. So that's, and then energy more than double, more than 10 X is energy like 50 X is. So that's roughly a 10 X. Um, with bot, with, with FSD, I think it's a 25X. And with bot, it might be 100X or more. Uh, and, you know, it's also possible that something else happens, some random, something that, that, you know, one of the things about investing is sometimes stuff happens that you don't see. You don't see it coming. I don't see anything coming that's going to disrupt the, the future for Tesla, but sometimes things that come along that you don't see and it could really have a negative effect. Japanese diet is healthy and people walk a lot. I walk a lot. Would you prefer selling Tesla for high dividend stocks to get passive income? No. <laughs> they are like women. The women in Japan are like women. That's true. How have Giga Mexico plans changed since announcement? I believe if you follow Walter Isaacson's biography that Giga Mexico has been delayed a bit. That the first factory to produce the robo taxi vehicle, the next generation vehicle, will be Texas. It's not clear how much longer it's going to take for Giga Mexico. I think Giga Berlin has plans to expand, and I'm, my guess is that they'll do it in China as well. The question we don't know the answer to is: Are they going to build four factories at once, or are they going to build one? You know, the the production in te Texas first, get it down, and then build three factories, or who knows? Tesla bot use cases that pay for themselves: Garden Bot, Walking Beyond iPhone. Personal delivery, Airbnb out your bot for other people's factory, Downton Abbey for everyone scenario, nanny bot. Uh, my favorite scenario, like the really the simplest example of a job for bot 
is you have a secure facility and you need to patrol the ex the the perimeter of the facility. And right now you have five guys patrolling the perimeter of the facility, five security guards. And all of a sudden you say, you know what? We can have five bots patrol the perimeter. We can have two guys at the center. And the bots, if the bots see something, they relay it back to the center and then the center reacts. The bots don't have to pick anything up. They don't have to interact with whatever they see. But if they see a potential intruder or something like that, it, the signal gets relayed back to the center and the center looks at that. All the bot has to be able to do is walk the perimeter. And there's value there. That's probably $20 an hour right there. Um, why sell shares when you could sell covered calls and keep shares? Uh, I don't play those games. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not big on the covered call concept. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just like too comp, comp, it's too complicated for my small brain. Can you be one the, the one the first ones to bring Cybertruck to Japan and bring huge publicity? I am thinking about bringing Cybertruck to Japan. I have an early order for Cybertruck. I have I probably won't do this, but I have been thinking maybe I'll try to bring my Cybertruck to Japan. Japanese women stay beautiful longer. I think that depends. I mean, I think that's generally true, but I think there are some American women who who stay beautiful longer. I honestly my ex-wife's still beautiful. He doesn't think so. I think so. Um, how are my options doing? The options have been going up. Yeah, the options are up a lot. You want a dividend from Tesla, simply sell a tiny percent of holdings year. She exactly. How many dog bots have been sold by Boston Dynamics? Not many. Uh, Warren, if you are looking for a wife, you chose the wrong country. Colombia has mamacitas and a quality and volume you wouldn't believe. Uh, I think I understand Japanese culture better than I understand Latino culture. People have pitched the Philippines to me. They pitched Thailand to me. They pitched Malaysia to me. I speak Japanese. I like Japan. I'm giving Japan a shot. I'm not saying it's the end of the road. I'm actually, I'm now, I've now got a backup plan of going to India, believe it or not. Because I think the pod car's real target market is India. So maybe I should be building the pod car in India, but I'm sticking with Japan for now. 2030 Tesla market cap. I don't know, 50 trillion, 100 trillion. What are my thoughts on Jason DeBolt women rants? Um, I don't know that I'm familiar with Jason DeBolt women rants. I think Jason DeBolt likes women. I'm not sure why you think he doesn't like women. I think he likes women. Um, I think Jason and I have different approach to uh, the future. Like, I want to have kids again. I don't think Jason is looking to have kids. I could be wrong, but I don't think he is. Have I looked into going to the Philippines? Yeah, I've looked into going to the Philippines. I've looked into Thailand. I, I just, I, li I lived in Japan before. I speak Japanese. I like Japanese culture. I like Japanese food. I'm enjoying myself here. I just had a great conversation with a third year Nagoya University college student and some guy who works for a local company and a uh, pretty interesting conversation. Does your Tesla valuation change when FSD will be licensed to other OEMs? No, no, because the, the value isn't selling FSD to someone. The value is in running a robo taxi that delivers rides and charges people for the rides. That's the value. Um, 69x there you go yeah it's gonna be 69x value it, it's 69x in 2030 and it's 420x in 2033 there we go my monthly expenses are lower in japan this apartment that you see me and it's a small apartment it's less than a thousand dollars a month and it includes utilities and internet um once i get my visa i'll have a broader scope of apartments will be available to me and i'll probably get an apartment that's double this size for like 800 dollars a month and then food is like i had to this Beautiful lunch, sit down restaurant, nice restaurant. It was like a four egg omelet and a few sides. And it was it was a thousand yen, which is like under seven dollars. I paid like twelve dollars for a quarter pounder with bacon and cheese, fries and a coke like two months ago. And I just paid less than seven dollars for a really nice sit down meal at a nice restaurant. Crazy. You can spend a lot in Japan. You can spend a lot in Japan. You can find places where things are expensive, but you can also live cheap. Um, and you know, I go to the, there's so many different examples of this, but you go to the grocery store and tofu, and I know tofu is specific to Japan. You can understand it'd be cheaper, but I can buy tofu for like 40 cents. It would be like three or $4 in America. Milk is cheaper here. Coca-Cola, like a, a, a little bottle of Coke. Like if you bought it in a grocery store in America, it'd probably charge you a buck 50, 78, seven, what was that? It's like, what was it? 78 cent yen. So it was like six, 50 cents. For a, uh, you know, just a little bottle of Coke. 
Is it possible that the government will break up Tesla before it becomes that huge? Yes. Yes, Raukar 09. I think the greatest threat to Tesla, the greatest threat to the, the improvement of the human condition is government. Um, I do think that Tesla is likely to see such things coming and break itself up before the government breaks it up. EU hearing the footsteps behind them, China and Tesla coming for their ice cars. Yep. Average salary in India is $400 a month. Yeah, I looked at, so if I went to India instead of Japan, so the, the theory behind the pod car is that, you know, doing it in Japan, I can hire, let's say I get to the point where I'm ready to hire full-time engineers. An engineering graduate from a Japanese university might make $30,000 a year versus $80,000 or $100,000 a year in America. So my cost of hiring an engineer here is much lower than America. So the cost of building the pod car is less expensive here. Also, the cost of space, the cost of, of you know, land, the cost of a lot of raw materials or things. For some reason, things are cheaper in Japan. Components, whatever. In India... I think an engineer might make $5,000 a year, like a good engineer might make $5,000 a year. So it, it might make sense to go there. The, 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 the negative side of India, and India also, they speak English. You know, I speak Japanese, but I'm not that great, but I speak English pretty well. And most generally speaking in India, they speak English. So that would be an advantage. The downside of India, um, and India like rents cheaper and food is cheaper and everything. The downside of India is the air quality is terrible. Japan is like super clean. Um, who makes the ethical calls on less bad safe driver versus safe pedestrian? Get your bone. This is a question that you see a lot. I just, I think James Dama just addressed this on, on X, but he says FSD, who makes the ethical calls on less bad safe driver versus safe pedestrian. There's like something called the trolley problem. And this misunderstands the facts. Humans don't make that decision well anyway. You assume that humans are good at, and, and humans don't make like an intellectual decision driving a car, should I hit the pedestrian or should I hit the car, right? Humans just react. And then later we try to explain why we made the decisions we made. We pretend that we made some sort of rational decision. We just react. Now the difference is the self-driving car will react quicker. It will see the problem sooner. It will probably make a better decision because it will be able to avoid the entire accident. That's the reality. That's what people don't want to understand. Water and electricity are more expensive in Japan. I'm not sure that's true, Mark. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm not sure. I'm not paying for my electricity. And as far as I can tell, water is free for me. So I don't know. Uh, and when I buy bottled water in Japan, it's significantly less expensive than America. If I go to a convenience store or, or a, a vending machine, I pay less than a dollar a bottle. For like 600 milliliters, let's say, of water is less than a dollar a bottle. If I go to 7-Eleven in America, it's probably a buck fifty. If I go to 7-Eleven in Japan, it might be 80 cents. So bottled water is cheaper here. I don't know about water like for a homeowner. Uh, lack of demand for stuff in Japan. Not enough young people spending money on useless stuff. Uh, I, I don't, you know, Japan's had deflation for like 30 years. They are having a little bit of a spurt of inflation. And then the dollar got strong. California just announced it will start using speed cameras with automatic tickets sent in the mail. Another thing, reason to robo taxi and work while you travel at a safe speed. Um, you see bouts of, of, Speed camera tickets and red light camera tickets and all sorts of places. I, the big distinction, I think, generally is that they they don't impose points on your license and they don't affect your insurance rates when you get those tickets. And the fines are usually lower. When I see those in the past in America, that's what's happened. Do a video on Palantir. I think I did a video on Palantir once. Just really quick for Dan on Palantir. I don't understand Palantir well enough to do a video about it. I don't really understand the business. And whenever I talk to people who are Palantir investors, who are like, no, no, Palantir is like the next Tesla or whatever, like, well, what's the growth story? And they don't really have an answer. Like the cost, I think the primary customer for Palantir is the government. And I don't think there's a huge growth story in supplying services to the government. Matthew Herges, Warren, is it crazy that Ford and General Motors are green so far and the broader market seems red so far? Um, I don't really worry about short-term stock prices, so I don't really worry about what happens on a daily basis with the stocks. Maybe, it would, maybe they were down before anticipating the strike, and then so the strike wasn't big news. I don't know. Credit cards make every die items more than it should be in America. I, I use credit cards in Japan. The prices are still cheap. In your opinion, what specific move by Tesla brings us to $300? I don't have a, I don't like making the short-term predictions. 
I think that the, it's possible that the deliveries of Cybertruck will spike the stock. It's possible that more information about the next generation vehicle will spike the stock. It's possible that FSD will... Cr- I think the moment when FSD crosses a certain threshold, let's say version 12 comes out, after a few iterations, Tesla says, you don't have to... And I don't know whether this is this year, or next year, or two years. At some point, Tesla says, no nags. You don't have to pay attention anymore, but you have to stay in the driver's seat. And if the car tells you you have to take over, you have to be ready to take over. But you can look at your phone. You can watch a movie, whatever. You just have to be there and ready to take over. If that moment comes, I think the stock doubles, if not more. And then it's not long from that moment to you don't have to be in the car. You can ride in the back seat. It, it starts working as a robo taxi. Adrian says, at around $400 a month, you could have a cook, cleaner, gardener for $1,000. Air quality varies depending on area of India. From what I understand, every city in India has poor air quality. You want to tell me what city in India doesn't have poor air quality? I'm open to listening. Um, good reception to Cybertruck should bring 300. Elon and Alex Karp, I saw that. Anything you noticed from Walter Isaacson book, which is not well known? Yeah. The big thing I noticed from the Walter Isaacson book is, is LEET. Um, SpaceX, the 1337 engine. Um, there's a new rocket engine coming after Raptor, and it's called LEET. It's spelled 1337, but it's pronounced LEET. It's some computer programmer joke that I don't understand. But that, there's some new engine coming from SpaceX that's going to be even better than Raptor. I think it's going to be much simpler. It's going to be lower cost per, per, per ton of thrust. Matt says, not the government. Every government that supports Western views and also any company that wants better organization and labor material management will use Palantir. That's still a limited growth story. That's not the same growth story as Tesla's going to make 8 billion bots at 100 million a year. Like, that's not a growth story. That doesn't do it. Next big future, this is my friend Brian. Brian says, I think the Palantir growth story is bad. AI-enabled global police state, AI-enabled intelligence agencies. Yeah, there's a dark side to Palantir. But you could say the same thing about Tesla bot, FSD, Cybertruck. They could all become military, used by militaries. I know Tom Nash is bullish on Palantir. I think I've talked to him about it before. Um, I have a friend who's visited Thailand and the Philippines to find uh, love, happiness, whatever. And he's actually been, he was disappointed in both countries. He says that women in Thailand are no longer... Um, they become a very westernized and the Philippines is a shit hole. He doesn't think the Philippines is a great place to live. How much further of a runway do you think Apple has until it becomes an IBM of sorts? I think it's already there. I, I, I don't think Apple is innovating in the same way that it used to. I think Apple will continue to grow to an extent. I think the iPhone's still the best phone. I love Macintosh computers, but I don't see the growth story anymore for Apple. And I think they're chasing the next iPhone, and I don't think they found it with the goggles, right? I don't know what their next big growth story is. I don't care about Chicken Genius. I like the guy, but I don't care what he thinks. Dan says, as far as I'm aware, Palantir makes companies way more efficient. Give me an example of a company that's been made way more efficient by Palantir. Which company? What's the company that's become way more efficient? Tesla's a hundred. I don't know if Tesla's a hundred startups. There's at least ten startups. Tesla buybacks or dividends in the future. What would you prefer if growth slows down? I don't care about that stuff. And growth isn't slowing down. So, all right. So let me just. I just want to cover this point again. Okay. I want to. I just want to hit this point that this is the industrial revolution changing economic GDP from flat to rapid growth. And AI, Tesla AI, FSD, Bot, XAI, you know, and and ChatGPT and all these other AIs, this part of the curve is going to look flat after the AI revolution hits. This is the industrial revolution and the internet revolution. The AI revolution is going to make this curve look flat. We're going to see massive economic growth. We're going to say a step change in the productivity of labor and a step change in the productivity of capital. It's going to spike massive economic growth. It's going to create jobs, not going to take jobs. 
it's going to take jobs, but it's going to take jobs in such a way that it makes the businesses so much more efficient that a job that had 10 workers goes to five workers and it serves five times as many jobs, five times as many customers, so that 10 workers becomes 25 rather than the, the 10 workers on one job becomes five, but you do five times as many jobs, so 10 workers becomes 25 workers. So it actually creates more jobs. The workers get paid more, the customer gets the job done for less or the product for less, and the employer makes more money. It's a game changer. It's a massive game changer. I love this one, W112. I'm a student that's enrolled in an AP economics course. We have to invest $1,000 in stocks that are not commodities or arms. Arms like military? We have to sell the stocks on May 17th. What stock should I buy? This is not the channel for you. I, I don't I don't answer questions. I mean, I'm, I'm just buy Tesla, but I can't say by May 17th. I'm not, I'm not predicting May of 2024 Tesla stock's going to be that high. Um, was AFK but listening? 1337 lead is old program style writing, replacing letters with numbers, inside joke code. Exactly. But that is the name of the engine. Yes, yeah, Sender says Twitter is more efficient when Musk got rid of 80% of staff. Same thing. You think Tim Cook said to Elon, you don't make a phone, I won't make a car? Yes. Yes, I do think that that conversation may have happened. I'm not saying it did happen, but it might have happened. Um, Palantir's big problem is they don't have generative AI only LLM integration. I don't know what Palantir has there. I don't think they have the same level of AI that the AI companies have. Uh, what trend do you notice on Japan that you think will make it to the States for investing purposes? I don't, I don't see anything on that. I, I haven't, I haven't been here long enough. I haven't noticed that. How's the weather in Japan? Uh, most of Japan is hot and humid right now. How would you handle a Tesla breakup? So with the, the picture I see of Tesla breaking up, the Tesla anticipates government action and breaks itself up. You see Tesla split off into Tesla Europe, Tesla China, Tesla United States, Tesla cars, Tesla energy, Tesla robo tax. So you, can see, you can see either geographic splits or functional splits that the robo-taxi network becomes its own business. It spins off robo-taxi. They spin off energy as a separate business. They spin off Tesla China or Tesla Asia as a separate business. They spin off supercharger network as a separate business. I could see them breaking up in a variety of ways to do, to do that. Um, I'm not in Tokyo, so I don't have a favorite restaurant in Tokyo. And I'm not like a fancy restaurant kind of guy. I go to like, I went to this place yesterday. It was yesterday. It was like, Gyoza, the little dumplings, was like less than $3 for six dumplings. I got like two rounds of dumplings for like, I don't know, six bucks or something. It's crazy. Um, do Japanese women like the smell of burnt hair? I haven't tried that yet. Palantir has been awarded five NHS contracts inside the UK. They streamline businesses and to function at its peak efficiency. Yeah, I'm sure the National Health Service in Britain is all of a sudden going to be amazingly efficient. I'm sure, I'm sure that's what's going to happen. What happens to my shares in a breakup? I think if there's spinoffs, then you would get shares in all the companies. So I owned, I owned 3Com when Palm split off. So if you own 3Com, then all of a sudden you own 3Com stock and you own stock in Palm. So if Tesla, let's say, spins off the robo-taxi as a separate business and you're a Tesla shareholder, you get shares in the spinoff. Manual labor will be the last thing AI replaces. Elon is correct about mass unemployment. The technical section is AI will replace hundreds of millions of jobs in a matter of weeks. It won't be in a matter of weeks. And I think you're missing that, that I think Elon is missing, that rather than replacing jobs, it may make the humans who learn how to use the AI will become more productive. And you'll just see a massive increase in productivity and abundance. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the total number of jobs shrinks. Also, given that we have population collapse, we may not meet as many workers. So that, that may not be a problem. Elon will load Ford and GM through assimilation. <laughs> Resistance is futile. Uh, okay, so I want to thank everybody for watching. I think I've gone long enough. Um, I hope this has been helpful. And uh, please follow me on X. WR, WR4NYGov, please become a subscriber if you can, or become a YouTube channel member, or support me on the Locals platform, warrenredlink.locals.com. Um, check out the shirts and other merch.
at elonbits.com. This is a great, I use this every day now. Tesla stainless steel water bottle. It's awesome. Thanks everybody so much for watching. Thank you, the Marks and Jim for moderating.